now come to our presentation on the cholinergic transmission. Of this lecture, students would be able to have an understanding of the cholinergic transmission and describe the events and information and inactivation of acetylcholine at the cholinergic synapse. So, this presentation will talk about the roles of acetylcholine in the ANS and in the PNS or the peripheral nervous system and the biochemical events at the cholinergic synapse. So, acetylcholine is considered be the neurotransmitter in the preganglionic sympathetic and the parasympathetic neurons. So we also call this as the autonomic ganglia. It is also the neurotransmitter at the adrenal medulla. So again, the adrenal medulla is considered to be one of the exception. It has a sympathetic innervation. Although it has a sympathetic innervation, instead of releasing norepinephrine at its junction, it releases the hormone or the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. The acetylcholine is also the neurotransmitter at all parasympathetic innervated organs. So we also call this as the neuroeffector junction. So at the neuroeffector junction of all parasympathetic innervated organs, acetylcholine is being released. It is also the neurotransmitter at the sweat glands in the piloerector muscle of the sympathetic autonomic nervous system. Again, the sweat glands and the piloerector muscle are considered to be exceptions because these, although these are sympathetically innervated, at the post-ganglionic neuron, the, their neuron will secrete acetylcholine instead of norepinephrine. In the peripheral nervous system, acetylcholine is also the neurotransmitter at the NMJ, or the neuromuscular junction between the motor nerve and the skeletal muscle. So again, when we say NMJ or the neuromuscular junction that is at the gap between our motor neuron and our skeletal muscle. So this uh, portion here or this diagram shows the neuromuscular junction. This part here is our somatic motor nerve or somatic motor neuron. And we also have here the postsynaptic membrane, which is the, the sarcolemma of the skeletal muscle. So this uh, portion here is our, again, our action terminal. And we have here, you know, the enlarged part of the action terminal is known as the synaptic knob or the synaptic button. So inside the synaptic button, we have there the presence of the uh, synaptic vesicle, which stores the acetylcholine. We also have the presence of the calcium channels that are important you know, for the, uh, the release of our acetylcholine at the synaptic cleft. So this gap here represents the synaptic cleft, and this portion here is the sarcolemma of the skeletal muscle, and of course we have here our individual muscle fibers, and uh, uh, when, for example, now the acetylcholine will be released in the synaptic cleft, it will act on the receptors that are present in the skeletal muscle. This diagram represents the organization of the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system is included for comparison. So we'll start with the somatic nervous system. The uh, somatic nervous system sends a motor nerve towards the skeletal muscle. And uh, the gap you know, or the junction between the motor neuron and the effector organ at the somatic, neuron, somatic nervous system is known as the neuromuscular junction. Its motor neuron uh, releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. For the sympathetic nervous system, now again we have the preganglionic nerve and the postganglionic nerve. The preganglionic nerve will uh, release now the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. In the case of the sweat glands, now it has a sympathetic innervation. Instead of releasing norepinephrine at its neuroeffector junction, it releases acetylcholine to act on the cholinergic receptor, muscarinic receptor. For the parasympathetic nervous system, again, its preganglionic nerve will release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Uh, the same is true for its postganglionic nerve. It also uh, acts by releasing 
no, the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. In the case of the adrenal medulla, it is considered to be an exception to the rule no, because it only has a preganglionic nerve, but it has no postganglionic nerve. Its preganglionic nerve will release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to act no, on the adrenal medulla to release and the circulation epinephrine and norepinephrine. This is another diagram of our ANS and our somatic uh, nervous system. So all of these are considered to be motor neurons no, because the uh, preganglionic nerve originates from the ventral root of the spinal cord. So again, these are the preganglionic nerve. All of this will release acetylcholine at the ganglia. For the neuroeffector junction, of course, when it is sympathetic, it will release norepinephrine with the exception of the sweat glands and the piloerector muscle. In the case of the parasympathetic nervous system, it releases acetylcholine at the neuroeffector junction. The same is true for the somatic nervous system. It releases uh, acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. The steps in the biosynthesis and the inactivation of acetylcholine. The first step is the synthesis and of course under this we have the important enzyme choline acetyl transferase. We also have the storage after the synthesis of acetylcholine. It will be stored in the synaptic vesicle. The third step is the release of the acetylcholine via exocytosis. And of course, after that, after the release, the acetylcholine will be able to bind to its receptors, and that is included under the receptor events. After the release, or and after uh, the receptor events, we have the termination and the inactivation of the acetylcholine via the acetylcholinesterase enzyme. This diagram shows the chemical structure of acetylcholine. And the, it is composed of two groups. Now we have uh, this on the right, on the left rather. It is the choline part. And this portion here on the right represents the acetate. The first step is the synthesis of acetylcholine. There are two substrates that are important for the synthesis of this neurotransmitter. These are the acetyl coenzyme A and the choline. Choline comes from the reuptake of the available choline from the synaptic cleft. Choline will be transported to the inside of the cell via choline transporters. The uh, acetyl coenzyme A, on the other hand, comes from, from glucose. Glucose will undergo an aerobic glycolysis to form pyruvate. Pyruvate will enter the mitochondria, and in there, it will be uh, undergo oxidative decarboxylation to form acetyl coenzyme A. This two will uh, combine you know, to form the uh, acetylcholine via the presence of the enzyme choline acetyltransferase or the CAT, producing coenzyme A as a byproduct. This is a diagram of the presynaptic nerve terminal. In the membrane of the presynaptic ter terminal, there are presence of the sodium-dependent choline transporters or the CHT. This choline transporter will function by transporting choline from the outside to the inside of the cell or to the cytoplasm of the cell. When choline is present within the cytoplasm, it will participate in the formation of the acetylcholine via the enzyme choline acetyltransferase. The acetylcholine is formed. It will now undergo storage in the synaptic vesicle. So the Acetylcholine that is present in the cytoplasm will be transported to the synaptic vesicle by way of uh, transporter proteins. And that transporter protein is known as the vesicular acetylcholine transporter or the VACHT. So acetylcholine will enter the cell in exchange for the hydrogen ions. So the importance of the synaptic vesicle is that it will protect you know, the acetylcholine from being degraded by the enzyme acetylcholine esterases. Third step is the release of acetylcholine. So how does uh, acetylcholine you know, being released 
from the axon terminal. So of course, the requirement for that is the presence of the action potential or the nerve impulse. When the action potential arrives at the nerve terminal, what it will do is it will depolarize the cell. It will open the calcium uh, dependent, no, calcium dependent uh, channels. So when this will be opened, it will promote the influx of calcium towards the inside of the cell. This calcium is important in order to promote the docking of the synaptic vesicle towards the axon terminal membrane. When that happens, there will be a fusion of the, the membrane of the vesicle with the nerve terminal membrane to promote the exocytosis. And that is the time that the acetylcholine will be released in the synaptic cleft. Many toxins are known to interfere with these processes and are effective in preventing the acetylcholine secretion. The diagram shows the botulinum toxin and we also have the black widow spider venom. This too has uh, interferes now with the secretion of acetylcholine at the synaptic vesicle. The B BWSV or the black widow spider venom has a simulatory effect, so it will stimulate the release of acetylcholine at the synaptic cleft. On the other hand, the butylinum toxin will inhibit, promote now the inhibition of the secretion of acetylcholine. So again, butylinum toxin is considered to be one of the most poisonous biological substances known. It is considered to be a neurotoxin produced by the bacterium Clostridium butylinum. After the acetylcholine will be released in the synaptic cleft, what will happen is it will undergo you know, the receptor events wherein uh, some of the acetylcholine will bind to cholinergic receptors in the postsynaptic membrane. After that, the termination of the acetylcholine action will take place. So acetylcholine will bind only briefly to the pre or the postsynaptic receptors and following the dissociation, the acetylcholine is rapidly hydrolyzed by the enzyme acetylcholinesterase or the ACHE. The diagram shows a summary of the events that happened during uh, the biosynthesis and the inactivation of acetylcholine. So, of course, the first step here is the formation of the acetylcholine from choline and acetyl coenzyme A, as represented in this diagram. So this is acetyl coenzyme A. It comes from the glucose in the mitochondria, uh, of course, through oxidative decarboxylation. And we also have the other substrate, choline. Choline will enter the cell via transporters to form acetylcholine through the enzyme, uh, choline acetyltransferase. After that, choline, acetylcholine will be stored in the synaptic vesicle. And it will be released in the synaptic cleft to act on the um, postsynaptic receptor. So after binding, the acetylcholine and the receptors will dissociate and it will be acted upon by the enzyme acetylcholinesterases. So the, this enzyme will break down acetylcholine into two uh, compounds. So we have the choline and the acetate. What will happen to choline is that it will undergo reuptake towards the axon terminal via the choline transporters to again participate in the formation of new acetylcholine. We also have those drugs that interfere with the action of the acetylcholinesterases. So these drugs that inhibit the breakdown of acetylcholine are effective in altering the cholinergic neurotransmission. So these drugs are called acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. For, them, for their MOA, they inhibit the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, resulting in decreased hydrolysis of the released ACH and intensification of its action at cholinergic receptors. So there are two types of acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, the irreversible and the reversible. For the irreversible inhibitors, uh, examples of this are the insecticides, particularly the organophosphates and the gases that are used in biological warfare. 
of the reversible ACHE inhibitors and examples of this are the pisostigmine, neostigmine, and the etrophonium. For their uh, MOA, you know, from the name itself, the interaction with cholinesterase is reversible so that the inhibitor enzyme complex breaks, the enzyme is reactivated, and ACHE will now be able to hydrolyze the acetylcholine. So comparing the two, the reversible ACHE inhibitors will, uh, will only be effective for a few hours, while the reversible type will be effective for a longer time. These are the drugs that interferes with the cholinergic neurotransmission. We'll start here with letter A, and that is the hemicholinium. The hemicholinium inhibits the choline uptake. It blocks the sodium-dependent choline transport. So in the axon terminal, we have there the presence of the choline transporters. Its main function is to transport choline from the outside to the inside of the cell to participate in the formation of acetylcholine. What hemicholinium will do is it will inhibit this transporter in order to block the transport of choline to the inside, inhibiting the formation of acetylcholine. We also have the another drug, the uh, Vesamicol, represented here on letter B. It inhibits the, the transport of acetylcholine into the synaptic vesicle. So again, within the axon terminal, there are the presence of the synaptic vesicle, and its main function is to store the acetylcholine in order to protect it from acetylcholinesterase. So what Vesamicol will do is that it will inhibit the transport of acetylcholine from the cytoplasm to the synaptic vesicle, inhibiting also the release of, of course, the formation and the release of acetylcholine in the synaptic left. We also have the botulinum toxin. So the botulinum toxin is, of course, produced by the Clostridium botulinum, and its main function is to prevent the release of acetylcholine at the synaptic vesicle. So the botulinum toxin will work by blocking the release of ACH from the presynaptic motor neuron. And this chemical denervation causes a cascade of events in the muscle as causing muscle paralysis. So this is basically very important in the neuromuscular junction uh, because, for example, when this Acetylcholine esterase will be inhibited and from being released, of course, there will be no acetylcholine that will bind to the, for example, the receptors that are present in the muscle so that uh, the muscle will not be able to contract and there will be muscle paralysis. And the last, of course, we have the, uh, as represented here you know, in letter E, we have, of course, the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors and of course, their main function is to enhance the synaptic acetylcholine because they will be able to um, block or inhibit the action of the enzyme that will break down acetylcholine.